Welcome. Welcome to the first episode of The Resistance. My name is Cal Moliné from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. This show is going to be about anything and everything that has to do with freedom. And so for today, we're going to go over such questions about what this freedom movement is all about. I received an email recently from a Mr. John Boatman. It states here, Mr. Moliné, after coming across one of your flyers and examining your website, I have several questions. In your ideal model of a stateless society, what role would private property play in the lives of individuals? Would one be allowed to personally own goods? Absolutely. And uh, private property begins with, of course, owning yourself, owning your body, and owning your actions. Um, Self-ownership. So there's going to be private property in a free and stateless society. Um, will it be owned by a collective of all individuals and shares last distributed by the collective, if you wish? Um, you can have a society of people that wants, that doesn't want anything to do with money, right? They can just trade and barter, um, and like like Craigslist, right? Just for good for another good. And I will never stop you. You can have a community of people that just wants to focus on, on just that. That's great. That'll be their way of exchanging, their, their way of trade. Um, I, on the other hand, uh, will like to use money. Money is a commodity. It's another good. Unfortunately, it was monopolized in 1913. But it's an easier way for me to, to trade, like bitcoins and uh, or like the Schreier silver sort of thing. Um, you can have a community of people that just want to run naked all day, you know, or a community of people that want to smoke pot, or those that don't, um, like the Amish, right? You can have uh, religious communities. You can have all kinds of communities that can coexist together. All of them drawing that moral line in the sand, saying enough is enough. You know, with violence. Violence is with all of us, and that line will connect all these communities together. We can have all kinds of communities um, founded on the non-aggression principle, founded on respect for private property, respect for one another, right? Um, or would the entire idea of ownership be done away with? Again, this goes again with um, freedom of consent, right? I have a freedom of choice, freedom to give my consent and to withdraw that consent. So if I want to... Um, be someone's slave, for example, I voluntarily agree to want to be someone's slave and at any point I don't want to be another person's slave, I can just change my mind the very next day, right? Um, there's, a, there's like a BDSM scene, I imagine, like uh, freedom of consent, freedom of choice, no means no, um, that sort of stuff, that's that realm of morality, that realm of, of agreement, volunteerism, right? Everything is voluntary, all interactions are voluntary. You state on your website that you promote moral values. What are these moral values? Are these moral values absolute or are they relative? These are absolute. Anyone who says that there is no such thing as absolute truth just made an absolute truth statement. Uh, check out Stefan Molyneux's Free Domain Radio, his website, uh, for universally preferable behavior. Great book on this sort of stuff. Great, he, the book on morality. The book on uh, the greatest argument, you know, from morality instead of from effect. Um, a lot of great information there, a lot of great sources there. Uh, if you want to learn more about the anarchist movement, um, go to Freedom Main Radio. Um, so yeah, uh, I mean, it's universally preferable not to murder, steal, assault, and, and rape, right? Rape is rape. Um, there's, there's no justification for rape, right? But this is not just against state violence. This, is, this movement is about also um, against the violence we do to one another. This is also a movement against the, the violence we do to children. Spanking is still violence. I mean, you create exceptions, exceptions lead to more exceptions. Violence begets more violence. Um, and change starts at home with yourself, uh, with, with our family, right? Uh, if you want to change the world, you know, first focus in our community, first, first focus on what's happening around you in your immediate relationships. Are they abusive? Are they unhealthy? Change those first. In your ideal model of a stateless society, what role would these values have? Since a stateless society wouldn't have law or the means to enforce law, we can have security. If there's uh, people want security, all it, all it takes is someone entrepreneur enough to create a service that provides security. Um, we can still have a court system. We can we'll have choices like in the way we have uh, with iPhones and you know, uh, we can have choices of services. But at least we'll have a choice um, in the matter that will not be abusive to us, that will not be unhealthy, 
uh, to the customer, right? I don't like the monopolized services were forced to not only accept the terms and conditions, we're also forced to to pay for them. We have we have no recourse to opt out, right? If uh, the security that's provided here, um, you know, the, the police force is abusive and unhealthy. It's like I wish I had a you know a way I could unsubscribe or stop these payments or just um, get out of that, pull out of that service altogether, right? And um, pay my one hundred fifty dollars or whatever you know to terminate the uh, the service you know agreement plan early and just go with someone else, right? Like uh, like the way Netflix try to come up with uh, with that with that over the night um, way of increasing the costs for the payment service plans. And everybody just opt out, right? Everybody unsubscribed, everybody just changed their mind and just um, and didn't want anything to do with Netflix. And the same way we can do uh, the same thing with services and businesses um, and organizations that are abusive, that do violate the non-aggression principle. Um, we can all opt out and essay, right? Um, like, uh, <laughs> like in polyface forums. Oh, that was a lot of fun. I was just in there. I was just over there. We were um, past week or two with my girlfriend. Um, now I really love what the stuff that Joel is doing up there. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff. You, you don't need laws. You don't need you don't need politicians. You don't need mayors or city councils or uh, our Congress to do what a community united with shared values for nonviolence, for equality, for freedom. We can do anything, anything. All of us standing up for each other, standing up for ourselves, standing up for our community, standing up for children, right? There's nothing, there's no limit to what a society united on, on values can, can bring, um, can curate, um, can prosper uh, in, in that direction. Let's see, next question. What about those who disagree over your definition of morality? So they'd be permitted to continue in their ways even if you see them as immoral. Um, you can you can do whatever it is you want to, right? As long as it's, uh, you're not violently forcing your ideas into other people, right? As long as you're not um, coercing another person using physical force or the threat of physical force, right? In my day-to-day -day life, I do not use violence to solve problems. I use a plurality of non-violent solutions, and in the same way. An entire society, an entire community can do the same thing, right? And that will be the best form of self-defense against any aggressor, against any person who wants to violate that, who wants to rape, who wants to murder, who wants to steal, who wants to assault. The greatest self-defense, form of self-defense for a community is to unite them, right? Social ostracism are our most powerful weapon, right? Someone who wants to go against a community that's united on principles, on values, go for it, go for it. Where are you going to go? No one's going to house you, feed you, clothe you. Everyone's going to disconnect from you, from your Facebook friends, unfriend you. If you still have a MySpace, gone. Right? No one's going to call you, text you, email you. Where are you going to go? Right? There's the door. Right? There's the door. You, you want to go? You want to break, break those principles? Go for it. Right? Violence defined as uh, placing a, a human being, a person, in an involuntary position without their consent and choice, that's immoral. It's immoral, it's wrong, it's evil to initiate that violence, to, to use violence on another human being. It doesn't matter how old or young they are, especially children. Um, so yeah, it's, that's, that's really it. It's really simple. It's not, uh, it's not that uh, complicated at all uh, with this issue of morality. Um, that stuff will take care of its own. Uh, we'll, we'll find better solutions um, as we progress, as um, when we head towards that direction. We don't want utopia though, right? We don't want perfection. We want, uh, that would imply idleness. That would imply stagnation, right? So we're done, right? There's no more else, you know, there's no more room for improvement. There's always room for improvement. There's always room to making things better. There's always room for, to grow, to learn, to uh, let go of old ideas and adopt new ones. Um, Maybe hopefully one day to get off this rock. Um, we don't want perfection. We don't want utopia. We want just the direction, right? That moral compass to let go of old ideas and adopt good ideas, new ideas, and keep heading in that direction to get ourselves, to get us um, to a better place. Let's see, what else do we have? What role would religious belief play in the stateless society you promote? You can practice and worship any belief you want. 
Would loyalty to religious organization or spiritual creed exclude someone from participating in a proposed stateless society? No. Uh, you can practice. You can again. You, you can have any religion. You can you can uh, worship any spirituality, anything. Um, as long as again you're not violently forcing your ideas onto other people, right? You can have Amish community like um, societies all around that can coexist together. Do any religious traditions influence your own movement? No. How does self-defense fit in your personal philosophy? You have a right to self-defense. You have a right to protect yourself, protect your property, protect your body against the aggressor, against the person who wants to initiate that violence. But you also have the right to not only self-defense, but to self-defense of others, right? To stand up not just for yourself, but to stand up for other people as well, especially those that can't, right? That's, that's, that's what a community is. Not to just when you get together as a community. It's not about living individualist lives all the way to just, you know, there's, there's other places for that. But here, as a community, where we have to interact with each other on a daily basis, um, it's about that shared understanding um, of, of, of uh, not aggressing against one another, right? Um, that we can happily coexist and live together without having to worry about if, you know, in the same way that the state wants us to believe, that uh, any one of us could be a secret Dester of Morgan, any one of us could uh, secretly, you know, without the law, you know, there's a knife behind someone's back, you know, getting ready to stab you. Um, that the only thing that's protecting you or keeping you safe from your friends and family or neighbor is the state. Right? We can have a, a, we can finally have a real community to just get rid of all that nonsense. To get rid of the stuff that we're misled to believe that we can't believe in ourselves and we can't believe in each other. Right? Um, to, to unite again, to, to unite, unite, unite. Uh, to become a community again, to know who our neighbors are. Does a man have the right to protect himself and his family from someone who would do them bodily harm? Absolutely. Man, woman, child. Do you see your goals as being the same as other anarchists or anti-state movements, and you simply differ in your means of attaining those goals? Yeah. Uh, there's a word I came across not that long ago called propaganda of the deed. It's, uh, it's a means to end statism, but to violence, right? Assassination attempts, bomb plots. Smash the state, steal from businesses, all these things that violate the non-aggression principle, all these things that violate the principles of having a voluntary society. Um, and that has never worked. And over the past 200 years, uh, the stuff that Emma Goldman was advocating for, violence will never set us free. Violence will never set us free. And this movement is entirely against all forms of violence. It's a movement that liberates our community from the idea that violence will set us free. And the only thing you really have to do in this movement is just talk. Talk with one another. Talk to your friends. Talk to your family. Talk to your community about freedom. That is the only thing you have to do. You don't need, you don't need signs. You don't need to picket. You don't need to protest. And none of that stuff is required. Right? The state wants you to protest. The state wants you to march down. The state wants you to sit on their capital steps so they can arrest you. So they know who the anti-authoritative people are. So they know who to target. Right? And how much freedom can you talk about? How much freedom can you spread? How much freedom can you promote in your community if you're locked up in a jail cell? Um, behind bars. Right? That would have been just lost, lost opportunities, lost months, years, years. Uh, and, and, and we need all those years. Every moment counts. Every hour counts. Every day counts. Before what's happening overseas, what's happening in Europe, reaches home. Already five, five cities in California have filed for bankruptcy. It's not going to be long before all this stuff comes here. All this stuff, like a tsunami, washes over us. But we can stand united. We can, we can prevent that. Um, we can um, hold on tight, right? Draw that moral line, right? And that line will extend all the way to where it is now and liberate uh, Rochester with Javier, to uh, liberate Delaware with uh, Eric, liberate uh, Riley with Jason, liberate uh, Bemidji with Ashley. Right? All these other liberate movements, and everyone will hold on tight, everyone will hold on hand to hand on that moral line. Right? And when that, when that wave of destruction comes, it will just come right through us. It won't even phase us, because we're already practicing, we're already believing, living in this volunteerist community by then. We're already practicing freedom in our day-to-day -day lives.
right? And but that time when I finally reach this shore, it's not going to make a dent. It's not going to make a difference. Um, we're already practicing and doing what it is we always wanted to do, right? To live free, to be free. Um, like that YouTube video of uh, of ants. Um, a single ant alone will drown, right? But these fire ants, though, um, when there's a lot of floods that goes around where the, in the plains that they live in, shines, they'll get together and they'll lock. They're interlock, and once they've interlocked, they create a raft, and none of these ants drown. None of them. You can apply pressure on them. You can. Uh, th th there's videos of people trying to apply pressure on these pool of ants, uh, just uh, floating on the water, trying to drown and trying to get them underwater, but they don't let go. There's air bubbles caught in there. Everyone can breathe. Everyone's holding on to each other. Right, and that's. I guess that would be the metaphor for this. That would be the metaphor for uniting our community. That would be the metaphor for, um, well, I guess the best course of action against all this violence. Um, <laughs> you think that uh, trying to go after the people that's you know committing violence is a way to get rid of all this violence and just lock them up in jail, but that doesn't solve the problem. You just have five new bad guys spring up. You just have five new villains spring up, like in the comic books, right? Um, instead of just focusing more on your community and turn them all into superheroes, turn them all into people that can stand up for each other and for one another and for themselves. You know, that's that's a superhero team I want to be a part of. That's Instead of a, a hero team of like a few people, we can have hundreds, thousands, right? We can have thousands of people with the ability to speak out, to use our voice, right? Our voice is our most powerful weapon. Our voice uh, can connect with one another, can inspire one another, can motivate one another. Um, the moment you draw that gun, the moment you have this violence, it will just instill fear, and the moment you pull away from everyone else, they all scatter, right? This is a temporary solution with long-term consequences. I'm sorry, I got off to a little tangent there. Um, on a local level, what are your opinions regarding other anarchist groups in Richmond, such as the Wingnut, a group that is open about possessing firearms? Um, so what do I think about other anarchist groups, like the Wingnut? I don't. But firearms, that's a good question. Uh, you can have firearms. This is not about not having firearms. You can have guns. Um, this is about the violence that we do to each other, that we advocate, right, to end that advocation, to end saying that, um, well, I wasn't spanking my child, I was disciplining him, you know? You know, it's the law sort of thing, you know? Um, I'm not uh, forcing my ideas on you, I'm just going to vote and pass that gun off to the politician who passes that gun to the police to enforce their preferences, to enforce their opinions, to enforce their ideas, right? This is about finding an alternative solution. Do you see, got cut off there for a second, so let me start over. Do you see any current personalities in the culture today as being sympathetic to your ideology? Yeah. Um, the names already listed earlier, like Eric Hoster from uh, Liberate Castle, uh, Newcastle in Delaware, uh, Javier Simbra from uh, Liberate Rochester in New York, um, Jason Romano from Liberate Rally in North Carolina, um, Ashley Smogels from uh, Liberate Vimagy in Minnesota. There's, there's a lot of people, my family, my friends, um, there's, there's a lot of people here in this community. There's a lot of people, anyone who's ever rebelled, anyone who's, they never liked being told what to do, right? Being forced to do something they didn't want to do. Um, we're all kind of born anarchists, we're all have these anarchist feelings inside of us, we're all have this inside of us to rebel against the system, um, to rebel against the matrix, right? Um, to, to fight, to, to rage, right? <laughs> against this, this, this machine, this, this system, this matrix. Um, anyone who wants freedom, anyone who values the non-aggression principle can be a part of this movement. Anyone who um, values themselves and each other and values um, community, right, values uh, non-violence, uh, equality and freedom can be a part of this movement. From voluntarists to agorists, um, anyone can be a part of this. Anyone can be a part of this. And that's all the questions. Um, thank you, Mr. John Boatman. And let's see, do we have any announcements? Oh yeah, so tomorrow. Tomorrow is the uh, Zine Fest Freedom Gathering. It's going to be 20 minutes north from here in Gospel, Virginia. It's at a 
beautiful, beautiful place. It's a homestead place by uh, Courtney. You have to uh, search on Facebook. I'll link all this information there. The uh, hosted by the uh, Cockroach Collectives. Wonderful, great group of people. There's going to be live bands, fire dancers, sword dancers. There's going to be zine making activities. There's going to be activities for children. We're going to have um, we're going to have an assignment, right? Draw anything about freedom. Then we're going to put all these uh, papers together, and make one zine, a collective zine with all these children's drawings about freedom, and we're going to have them presented at our Liberate RVA table uh, in October. Zine Fest is in October. This is just uh, a fundraiser to help uh, offset the cost for setting the event. Um, so, but all this information, uh, I'll link it on this uh, this video at the end of this. But great stuff. A lot of fun stuff is happening tomorrow. Uh, so, well. Uh, I guess that's about wraps it up. So, <laughs> this is your uh, friendly neighborhood anarchist from Richmond, Virginia. I have a lot of flyers I gotta go pass out for the uh, gathering tomorrow, the Freedom Gallery. And I hope you enjoy this video. Um, I'll see you at the victory party.